Um, I didn't know much about Billy Hill or Jack Comer, I have to admit, but I knew a little bit about the Cray Twins, and I'm really interested in that kind of era in general and the gangsters who were up and coming in that time. So it was, it was interesting to read it and to get to know them and learn about their lives and the impact they had. Well, there's not much that you can find out about her, so I googled her name and um, there's no pictures, like um, Rita has pictures, obviously Billy Hill and Jack have pictures, there's no pictures of her, and the only thing I could find was a little snippet from, I'm not sure if it was an autobiography or biography, but it seemed to be in um, Billy's own words, talking about Aggie, and it was a tiny section saying how she was this different kind of girl and that's why he married her and she was sweet and young and pretty and that kind of thing. So that's all I really had to go on. Okay. I think Aggie sees in Billy this older guy who's quite exciting, who has a lot of charm and charisma, is different from the other guys that she's ever met, because she's a little bit younger than him. And at the start of the film, she's probably about 20 years old, around that age. So he's exciting, he's that kind of teenage, older man kind of thing. A bit rebellious, the parents don't approve. So at the start of the film, I think that's the kind of thing she sees in him. I've done bits and bobs before, but never really... Actually, that's a lie. I've done 1940s before in Doctor Who, and that was wartime, but I was playing a character that was about 12 years old, so I was very young, I had pigtails, I didn't get to do the glamour of the 1940s, 50s, so that for me has been absolutely amazing, to get my hair done, to have the makeup, you know, I did the scene where I had the kind of S-wave that they had, the glamour, that I've enjoyed so much, getting to wear the dresses every day, it's a new dress, it's just so much fun for me. Um, and I've done other period stuff in corsets, in Victorian stuff, but it's sort of the first time in this kind of era where I've played an adult woman. And I'm enjoying it, I'm loving it. Great. Leo, we went into rehearsal, I didn't know anyone, I hadn't met anyone before, and it was like that, it was straight away. We just kind of clicked. I looked into his eyes the first scene we did, and I was just, this is gonna be okay. I thought, this is gonna work. I think we work in similar ways. We both kind of just get into it, don't like to faff about too much, be professional. And yeah, it was kind of instantaneous. Simon knows what he wants as a director, and I like that. He can see it in his head. He does a lot of things. I think he has the whole film mapped out in his head, which is amazing to come onto a set and have someone that you can trust, knows what they're doing. You can go to him, ask questions, and he knows exactly how to tell you what you're going to be doing. Um, yeah, it's been really refreshing. Because it's his baby, he wrote it, and he knows, he can see it in his head, he knows how he wants it to be. Um, so yeah, I feel really comfortable with him. And he does a lot of things in um, one shots, and that's such an interesting way to work as an actress, because you're not, you're not having to remember what you did before, you can just be fresh in the moment, do things differently each time, you're not coming in close, it's quick. Yeah, it's really refreshing. I wasn't aware of Simon's work. I did a little Google on him, obviously, when I got offered the role. But I'm the kind of actor that likes to come in fresh to things. I, I like to be surprised. I don't need to know everything. Um, and that, it keeps me on my toes, keeps things a, as a challenge and, yeah. But I've heard great things. I mean, everyone was singing his praises. And I heard that he does a lot of horror things. So I'd be interested after doing this to watch and see what, 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 what he does with that, what he's done before, yeah.
Well, we were just talking about the, the tone of the film, kind of how everything should be natural and subtle and about Aggie and what he knew about Aggie, what I'd read about Aggie. And what we talked about the most was where to put her kind of in the class system. Because you've got all these actors who are like proper gangsters, they've got the East End accent. And we were talking about how Aggie should be different from them. She should be, have a little bit more class than them, be a little bit more from a middle class family. Her parents aren't approving of uh, Billy. And so that's the kind of things that we discussed. It's just exciting. It's, I've, from what I've seen, it's a beautiful, beautiful film. The costumes are amazing. The, all the actors look the part. They all look authentic, 1940s, 50s um, men. They're all very dashing. Um, so that's probably for the ladies. <laughs> uh, other reasons to see the film? I think there aren't many films in this kind of era that are done well, gangster films. And I definitely think that we've hit the nail on the head with this one. So in the film, Aggie starts off as Billy's wife. She starts off as his sort of partner in, in crime, his support, um, the woman behind the man kind of thing. Um, and then he gets involved with another woman, which happened all the time in, in that kind of time frame. And instead of divorcing, they, well, she chooses that she wants to run his businesses for him. And that's such a strong thing for a woman to do. And part of the reason why I wanted to do this role is because she's such, she's got her vulnerabilities, but in the end, her arc, she becomes such a strong, independent woman, and that's such a rare thing for that time. And I'm sure there were so many women like that in that time that you just don't hear about. And that's what attracted me to the role. <laughs>